good morning, crisp fall morning. That means it is going to be a crisp fall morning until about 11, and then it'll be a summer day until about 3, and then it'll be a fall evening. So the weather in Georgia means that when I get ready to come here, I'm cold, my feet are cold, my hands are cold, and so I put on something warm. And when I leave here, I have to run by, change clothes most of the time, and put on something a little bit different. Do y'all know that Georgia has four seasons? And right now we are in our favorite season. Our very favorite season is fall when the leaves are beautiful, the roads are packed, the apples are ready to pick, and the money is rolling into the counties that we serve. So to every single tourist, that ventured out on the crazy roads this weekend, thank you for coming to visit. And I hope you'll come back again soon. You know, you can come back in December when it's not quite so crowded. You can come back in February when it's not quite so crowded. And then you can come back in March and we'll sell you a home by spring because we hope by spring interest rates will be down a little bit. So. That's our goal, and our goal means that we have to pray, and we have to vote, and did you see that Trumpy got, <coughs> Trumpy has a new part of his wardrobe today. He got a hat to match an outfit that I wore on Friday, and I was going to wear my hat. It won't fit over all this hair, and I don't know what to do about it. I can't shave my head, just wear that hat. So I got to figure it out, and I'm going to figure it out because one day I'm going to get to wear my hat. But that, Trumpy got a promotion today, and he gets to be the gold elite. So there you go. There he sits. <coughs> He's a reminder. <coughs> and y'all, this coffin's been going on all weekend long. I was outside quite a bit this weekend, and something even is in the air in the fall. You know, the spring brings all the pollen and all the stuff, but fall brings something too, and I don't know what it is, but it's gotten a hold of me. So, And I've been around quite a few people who have been doing the same thing, so it must be in the air. i tell you what else is in the air. We are really, really getting excited about the fact that there's been a heavy, heavy turnout in voting, and I want to encourage you to show up and vote. And vote, and that's just all I'm going to say. But at the end of today's program, you're going to get to hear early, early this morning, I started listening to a preacher who was talking about something that just made sense. And you know what he was talking about? The Bible. And the Bible makes sense. And so I just want to remind y'all that, you know, if we, if we live right, think right, do right, we kind of look up and say, well, Lord, is this what you had in mind? Recently, I was talking to somebody who is dealing with a parent with dementia problems and um, early signs, the early moments, and I said, boy, what I would give to have my granny back. She was 89 years old when she was diagnosed with dementia, but it was early. We kept watching and we kept seeing the signals, and when she would call me at 3 o'clock in the morning, I would say, granny, what is it? And she'd say, well, Suge, I was just wanting to talk to you a minute. What I'd give for that phone call again today, there are so many folks in our communities, in our viewing area that have lost loved ones. There are so many folks who know that, yes, my husband of 40 years is sitting right beside me, but he doesn't know who I am. Yes, my husband of 55 years is laying in that hospital bed, but he knows that I love him and I'm there for him. And today we want to ask each and every one of you to continue praying for Johnny and Kathy Clark. Johnny's been in the hospital over 20 days now. And this is, this is the all-American love story. It's one of those love stories that started a long, long time ago, and it never failed. And so today um, he is getting a little bit of strength. His labs are coming back better. And we know that prayers are answered, so please, would you please pray for Kathy and Johnny Clark. They are down at Piedmont, and he is getting excellent care, but it is a timely thing. At over 20 days in the hospital, you know it wears on everybody. So please pray for them and pray that they get some good news in the very, very near future. If you, if you know Kathy and Johnny, you know 
that their love story was like one of those started way, way back then. <clears throat> and they have held it together all these years. So, so let's hope that um, good news comes from the hospital, the tests keep getting better, and he gets to go home where he belongs with his sweet wife. So we're going to share some photos with y'all today. And one of the things we're going to share is um, a house that I have for rent down in Ball Ground. I'm helping a lady who just said, I'm up against it. I just can't find anybody that understands you can't move three or four kids in a two-bedroom house. So it's just a two-bedroom house. And so, you know, we need either a retired couple or a young couple with maybe one child or maybe a child and a child on the way because there's an extra room you could use for a nursery. But we can't. People don't get the concept. You can't pile a bunch of kids in a bedroom. You can't put boys and girls together. you got to have enough space. So everybody who's looking can't fit in the house. So if you have, if you're moving to the area, and maybe a retired couple, maybe somebody who's building a house in the next year, and you're going to need somewhere to stay for a year while you build a home. If you've got, and then there are no animals, no animals and no smoking. Sorry, this house is spotless, clean, and in a great location, super great location. And it's $1,500 a month. And I told her, I said, I know you're getting discouraged, but yeah, I'll try to help. So I'm trying to help. So we're going to show some pictures of that. We're also going to show some photos of, you know, it's crazy, but it is Halloween, and Halloween is going to be happening in the Botanical Garden this Saturday. We're going to welcome about 300 kids, and your kids are invited to come too. This is a free event. The Ball Ground Botanical Garden will be decorated. There will be a lot of photo ops where you can take a lot of pictures with your family. It's a great place to do a fall photo. Your kids are going to get lots of candy. They're going to be all sugared up. And I've painted a whole bunch of pumpkins that your kids are going to leave with either a necklace or an ornament. They're going to have something that they can take home with them. And it's all free. And it is in ball ground at the Botanical Garden. So please come out and be with us. And this is on this Saturday. And it starts from noon to 4. So come and be with us. You'll get refreshments and you'll get all kinds of good stuff. So, now I love my bear, but I've got him sitting kind of cattywampus. You can't see all of his hat. I love that hat. I just wish it fat over fat. It fat. It fit over my big old head. Now this <coughs> is the photo of the week because now we're going to start our day with everybody smelling McDonald's fries. There is nothing any better in the world than a fry that just comes out of the deep fryer at McDonald's. When it just comes out, it's got just the right salt on it. I don't care who you are, you can't compete with that. McDonald's has got it nailed for fries when you get them fresh and hot out of the fryer. And our president was getting them fresh and hot out of the fryer. He was so funny, he was so cool. He was so relaxed and he was so excited and, and about 10,000 people were out there waiting, watching and hoping to get a glimpse of him. But it was really, really cool and I loved every single minute of it. <clears throat> but I laughed and I told people, I said, listen, on at a restaurant, I used to stand over that deep fryer and I will tell you the words, I guarantee you, when President Donald John Trump walked out of that restaurant and put his sport coat back on, his crew said, sir, you smell like a greasy French fry because when you've stood over that deep fryer, you smell like a greasy French fry. <clears throat> there ain't a thing in the world you can do about it other than go home, take a shower. Now this is the baby. This is the baby. You know, Blake Shelton did a song about the baby. This is the baby. This is matching number 66 Chevelle, and this is the engine. This was built by a genius here in Gilmer County. <coughs> Won't disclose names. It's in a secret location, but everybody knows where the location is. But it is so cool, y'all. This is a 396, 375 horsepower engine in a matching numbers 66 Chevelle. Did I say matching numbers? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, this is the coolest car. It came out of Tennessee, and the day it was loaded up and brought back to Georgia, I said, I think this is a great investment. And somebody said, I don't know, we'll see. Well, we'll see, all right. It's going to be the best-looking car in Gilmer County. If you've got one that looks any better, I challenge you. Put a picture of yours up there. So 
but it is going to be so cool. And this, this engine truly was built here in Gilmer County by a genius young man. Now, last week we showed the photos of the house that was totally reconstructed. I mean, they redid this. They changed the roof line. They changed the front porch. They changed everything. And this is a picture I captured this weekend. It is so very, very different. It looks light and refreshing. And we're working on putting all this together because if you're looking at property and you're thinking, well, I don't like this about it. I don't like that about it. But could I change it? Could I do this? Of course you can. It just takes a few YouTube, uh, watch a few little episodes of YouTube Master the Disaster and you'll see what it takes. Now, a shout out to Mountain Brook because I went through Mountain Brook yesterday and quite a few houses were decorated for the holiday. And I love that people spend their time and energy doing that, welcoming the kids in. Mountain Brook is a subdivision in ball ground, lots and lots of houses. So if you want to take your kids somewhere that I feel it's a great, safe neighborhood to go take your children uh, trick-or-treating if you live in the Canton or ball ground area. Wonderful, wonderful place. And this is the house I chose to get the, that was my choice, not anybody else's. I said, I think they did a great job, and so we want to give them a shout out. And uh, many of the houses in there are decorated, and one of my favorites was one of the guys that I love to watch because he does stuff all the time, and his was really cute. Now, this is the Cole Haynes of Cornfield County. This is me and my husband and four of the kids and Ma and Pa. And let me tell you something, love those people to death. Homer Martin taught my kids so much about living and life and respect and such a good, good guy. And Mama taught me that you can can apples, dry apples, put up apples, and you can do anything in the world with apples. So if it is apple season and you have a few apples you haven't done anything with, make some homemade applesauce. And then in the dead of winter, you can make either an applesauce biscuit or you can make an applesauce cake. Or you can, uh, you know, apples are just good for you. So an apple a day keeps the doctor away. But that is the Cole Haynes of Cornfield County, and that was in 1978. So, and this, this young lady got third place in her age group. I don't think she'd ever done a race before, but this is to raise money and awareness for domestic violence. It was done in ball ground, and it is so crazy, y'all, because... Evelyn is like busy, 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 and she took time out to do this race, and she finished third in her class, so that was pretty, pretty cool. It's in the age group, and so she was in the age group, and she did great. So, yeah, yesterday she was a little sore, but that's good. That's good. She did a great job, and once again, raising money for domestic violence. Now this, you talk about a love story. This is Precious Joyce Wilkie, who happens to make the world's best cream cheese pound cake. It puts mine to shame. It is as good as Marcel Ledbetter's, but Marcel Ledbetter's gone to be with Jesus and she's cooking up in heaven now. This is, we had breakfast at Sunrise on Main in Ball Ground and these people, precious, precious friends of Joyce's, we didn't know it, but they paid for our breakfast. How sweet is that? That's what happens when you live in a small town. Somebody sees you, somebody loves you, somebody picks up your check. That's what you do. That's just how small towns work. So, so thank you. And this is funny, y'all. I got to show you this. This is crazy. I want one of these. And I was explaining it to Joyce. I said, oh, I think I can make one of these. And you can do this and you can do that. And I looked down in the corner and you won't believe what it said in the corner of that. Y'all are going to be so surprised. It said, made in China. And I said, are you kidding me? Because I already had it in my mind that somebody had bought one of those old screens and painted it and fixed it to look like this and put the shelving on it. No, it says made in China. And I was like, are you kidding me? Even though it looks like a natural old piece, no, it's not. It's made in China. And you can probably go to Amazon today and order it. But I really do like that. And this is just a little bit of what we worked on all weekend long, getting bags and bags and bags and bags of candy ready for y'all to bring your kids to the Botanical Garden on Saturday, again, noon to four. And uh, we will have our scarecrow will be there. We'd love for you to vote for the scarecrow. It is the cutest thing ever, and I will give you the uh, link to do that. But we would love for you to vote. Evelyn worked really hard, and I worked really hard. I went and bought the coat that went on it, so... <laughs> That's all I did. 
but it is so cute, and she did a lot of work on it. And this is what I spent my weekend doing. I think I've done 150 of these little necklaces and ornaments, and I painted various pumpkins on them. Some of them on the back, I put go dogs, and I did some little rhinestones for those little diva girls. And so lots and lots, I've made lots and lots of necklaces this weekend in my spare time. That's what I did. So now this is the house that I have for rent. And I would love for y'all, if, if you're a retired couple, if you're somebody just starting out in your marriage and you don't have a bunch of kids and you want to rent something while you build, this is the sweetest house, spotless clean, and it is in ball ground. It's $1,500 a month, and um, if you'll reach out to me, I'll be happy to show it to you. And let's get a good tenant in there. So, and again, $1,500 a month. Um, it's a cute as it can be and clean as a pen and just a nice nice home for you to be in while you build your mega home so and my favorite part about this is the back porch because it has the coolest back porch it has a cover over it and it's just really really comfortable so and it also has a place where they had a swinging bed so that was really neat now um all the good stuff that happened this weekend all the good things that are going to happen but also a tragedy happened. There was a young man and a young woman killed over in Fairmount this weekend. So please pray for the families. This was one of those things. It was um, somehow they left the road, hit a big rock, and the people in the vehicle were ejected. That was two out of three lost their lives. So please pray for the families. The Hightower family um, is, you know, we think about a 17-year-old. You just don't think that you're going to not be able to spend a lot more years with your 17-year-old. And the 26-year-old, the same. You think they're going to be here forever. So there's still one of them that is in recovery, and I think they're um, 24 years old. So please pray that that one does recover, and those other two have recovered. They're with Jesus. So, so I want to share something else about a lady who's with Jesus, because Audrey Fountain was... Um, fighting cancer a long long time she was fighting 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 she had so much going on and she never gave up she never gave up but she went to be with jesus and today is her birthday and her husband posted something and he posted the first picture that he ever had of her and he said that was the first day that i knew that she was going to be the love of my life and donnie and audrey fountain spent many many years together raising kids raising their grandkids and loving the lord and i can remember when their life took a very different turn and they started having, they had prayer meetings out in their yard and then it was kind of like a covered dish. Everybody would bring food and we would hang out and it was just really cool and it was just the sweetest atmosphere. They lived next door to Jerusalem Church and if y'all remember the tornado that came through on Palm Sunday just destroyed that church and they live right next door to the cemetery so it just made sense and, and they started having prayer meetings in their yard and it was just a, a way that that community came together and uh, life changed for many of those folks. But there you go, sweet Audrey. She is missed. Boy, let me tell you, she is missed. And um, she was loved. Now, I don't know how many of y'all made it up to Kimsey Ridge this weekend, but on November the 2nd, this is the best deal in North Georgia. You cannot get any better than this. $10.00 all day long stay and enjoy music and all kinds of things so uh oh <laughs> there you go but this is going to be an all day event for ten dollars think about it you can't do anything for ten dollars and it's going to have music and going to have great great fun and it starts at 11 a, starts at 11 a.m goes to 9 30 p.m so you'll have to be out after dark, y'all. But it will be fun. And again, this is 2018 Highway 68, Copper Hill, Tennessee. If you go to Copper Hill, you hang a left, and you go out uh, 68, about two and a half miles, you will see it on the right. So come and be with everybody. And uh, it's going to be a really neat day. And that day, they're going to have all kinds of things for sale. They're going to have um, crafts and goodies and homemade things. And I hope that you will be there and help support Kimsey Ridge. I'll tell you who else is gonna be there. Raven Welch is gonna be there, and you love Raven Welch Harris is gonna be there, and you love her music, and you love her, so come out and enjoy a whole day. Now, we're gonna take a commercial break, and when we come back, 
we're going to share some things that I think you're going to like. I think you like Dwight Sanford's music. And I said last night, he, he is really antsy about the election. But we're also going to share something with y'all today. The Bible hasn't changed. The Word will never change. And if you listen, as Travis Bridgman said, the righteous will vote the right way. And I keep telling Dwight, I said, it's going to be okay. We're going to be okay. But in order for us to be okay, you have to get out and vote. And you have to vote righteous. That's all I'm going to say. So now we're going to take a commercial break. We'll be back in just a minute. Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella J, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meat, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ. How may I serve you? up the first down. There he goes up the middle. He'll be cut down at the 20. He's into the end zone for a fan and rebel score. Catches it in stride. He'll go to the end zone. Breaks the tackle. Touchdown. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. pretty busy weekend, but my busy weekend does not hold a candle to President Donald John Trump's busy, busy weekend. He went to the roast that they do every single year. Um, this is for, it's to raise money and raise awareness. The Catholic Church, it's their biggest fundraiser of the year, and I think they raised $10 million that night. But it was, it's always in fun, and it's a lot of fun, a lot of laughter, and a lot of jokes. Well, one of the people that was supposed to be there didn't show up, but President Trump nailed it with his stuff. He did a really, really good job, even though that person didn't show up. It was a great night. It was a great day of fellowship. We also, on the news this week, saw that often Christians are persecuted. And we're going to show a little clip of some persecution of a couple of young college boys. We're going to also show President Trump as he was dishing out the French fries at McDonald's. Now, I know running a restaurant, seriously. When I left there every day, I would take a break from 2 o'clock until about 3.30 in the afternoon. 
I would run either to the beauty shop and get my hair washed and dried because I smell like a deep fryer, and then I'd run home and change clothes. Or I'd run just take a shower and wash my hair myself because I smell like a French fry. All day long yesterday, I guarantee you, every event President Trump went to after he stood over the deep fryer, he smelled like one of those amazing McDonald's French fries. So we're going to recap and show you a little bit of what his weekend was like. It makes mine look like I took a nap all weekend long. But you know what? That's what happens when somebody loves our country, cares about our country, and is getting out trying to get the word. This is how it goes. Stand by. 30 years old. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Sir. My first day at McDonald's. I'm looking for a job. Hello, Hello President you. Trump. I'm Derek Jack and Tony. I'm the owner. Well, that's a good owner. <laughs> Must be a wealthy guy, huh? <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, I'm looking for a job, and I've always wanted to work at McDonald's, but I never did. I'm running against somebody that said she did, but it turned out to be a totally phony story. So, if you don't mind, I want to work at the French fry counter. Absolutely. Okay, how much are you paying me? How much are you paying me? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. Inda is here. She has, this is Inda. She has an apron for you. Oh, and good job on your oh, first day. I think I should take President off. Trump? Should I take off my jacket? I think so. The press wants to see this. <laughs> oh, you. He's a wealthy guy. Uh, he owns a lot of McDonald's. Okay. That's great. Thank you. Okay. Yes, yes. Oh, I think that's good. You want to do that? Yeah. Mr. Trump, what's your favorite thing to order at McDonald's? I like it all. I like, <laughs> I like every ounce of it, everything. But I do like the French fries where I'll be working. I listened to uh, Kamala. She said it was so hot. It was so hot. It was such a tough job. I tell you, you have a man that's been doing it for many years at the French Fries, right? I want to learn everything. We're going to see. I'm going to learn how to do it right now. Thank yes. you. Welcome here. So, President Trump, I have it. superstitious. Now it's over the left shoulder now. And this is there. I mean that's color? thousands of people. That's Hello, how are you? What a beautiful woman. Look at her beautiful child, the whole thing. It's like the perfect looking person. That's it. That's, that's the compliment. Thank you, darling. Thank you. Hi mom. Look at mom over there. Thank you very much. Thank you, darling. You have a great mom? Good or great? That's right. <laughs> she knew what to say. Thank, Thank you very much. America, Thank you, darling. Wow, so nice. All right, you're doing a good job. Okay, these are nice people we're meeting, huh? Yes, and here. So you're here, won't okay. be too heavy. Got it. Harry, look at this guy. I'm not going to mess with him, huh? How you doing, you sir? You fantastic. Hello. This is my new baby boy. How are you? Your new baby. How yes. are you? Doing great. How are you? So this is compliments of me, okay? All right. You go have a Thank good you. time. Don't eat too much, right? I won't. <laughs> you have a great day, Thank sir. you, man. You take care. Thank you, honey. Have a good time. Thank you. It's cute. This is fun. I could do this all day. I wouldn't mind this job. I like this job. I think I might come back and do it again, I think. Thank you. It's Kamala's birthday? She's 60 years old? Yes, I would say happy birthday, Kamala. She's turning 60. Uh, Did you get her some fries? I think I'll get her some flowers. Maybe I'll get her some fries. You're right. That might be. I'll give her, give her some McDonald's. I'll get her a McDonald's hamburger. 
No, it is her birthday. That is true, right? Happy birthday, Kamala. Happy birthday. See you later. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Mr. Trump, thank you, everybody. We remember Donald Trump hand-selected three members of the United States Supreme Court with, with the intention that they would undo the protections of Roe v. Wade, and they did as he intended. Oh, you guys are at the wrong rally. No, I think you meant to go to the smaller one down the street. All right, so that moment we brought to you yesterday. Mm -hmm. Today, we'd like to bring in those students who yelled that out to Kamala Harris. They're two pro-life students university, at the University of Wisconsin La Crosse, both juniors. Uh, Luke Pulaski and Grant Beth join us now. Luke, Grant, thanks for being with us this morning. Um, Luke, I'll start with you. Just take us into that moment. What, what happened yesterday? We see the video clip. Is there anything more you can tell us about what you guys had to say and what happened afterwards from that video? Thank you. Uh, yeah, it's great to be here. Um, I would say the first thing uh, I want to bring up, this is our first time taking an interview with anybody, and I think it's important because this is our raw, like, untold story. There's a lot, happened that, a lot that happened off camera uh, that we said at the protest, and or, well, while we were protesting. And I guess we could start off with when she, after she talked about overturning Roe v. Wade and Donald Trump, I yelled out to the crowd that abortion is the sacrament of Satan. And when I said that, I deeply do believe that as a Christian. And about 10 seconds go by, and that's when the video of uh, my friend Grant and I uh, proclaiming that Christ is Lord and Jesus is King, uh, when we said that. And I think it's important to say this is a small venue, and we were about 20 to 30 yards away from Kamala at this point. There's a lot of controversy that says she wasn't talking to us, or we left, we didn't get kicked out. Well, I can speak on Grant and I's behalf um, on video. Grant's getting pushed and shoved. And um, there's about five seconds after, or, or before she tells us to go to the smaller rally down the street, you can see on the video, she waves, she waves. She was actually waving to me. I uh, took this cross off my neck that I wear. And as we were getting asked to leave, um, I held it up in the air and waved at her and pointed to her, and she looked directly in the eye, kind of gave me an evil smirk. And, um, yeah, I just want to clear that up and confirm that she 100% was talking to us. Mm -hmm. And there's other controversy that says we left. Um, we were getting shouted at, pushed, assaulted, um, screamed at. So we were walking away, but there was about three um, attendees there, volunteers that kicked us out with press with badges or whatever they had. And I specifically remember this one man saying, you were uninvited and unwelcome to this event. You need to leave. And all they did was walk us out the door. They didn't tell us why. No cops escorted us out. Uh, no Secret Service. And, uh, yeah, that's our story. So so wh where was this event held exactly? Uh, this was held in our University of La Crosse's gym. So, so did you, uh, did you pay tuition only... to go to the university? Uh I do, I do pay tuition to go to the school, yeah. but this was a free event. Um, this is in a really small venue. They only said there's about 2,500 people there, which when she told us to go to a smaller rally down the street, I didn't really think that for a political rally, there could be smaller than 2,500 people. But, but you, you were allowed to be there. You, you paid to be there. Yes, basically. correct. Yeah. Correct. Grant, I want to get your point of view from there. So <clears throat> is there anything you want to add to Luke's story? And, and what did it feel like? I mean, she basically said... You said, you said, or Grant said something about, uh, or Luke said something about Jesus, right? Jesus is king. Jesus is Lord. And she said, you're not welcome here. I mean, I want to know what you felt in that moment and if there's anything you want to add to his story. First of all, thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Will. Thank you, Charlie, for having us. Um, you know, we are very blessed to be here. Um, we are very blessed to speak on the national stage. Um, it's important that we get our message out um, in any way possible. Um, First of all, we didn't really intend on, you know, going at any people. Um, people online were calling us mega fascist. Um, that was never our intention um, going to this rally. Um, we were only here to protest our faith and 
Um, we did so. Um, we never expected this to grow as large as it was. Um, essentially, she was speaking, and we decided to say, Christ is King, Jesus is Lord. Um, and we got a lot of backlash. Um, as you can see in that firsthand video, um, I was pushed uh, by an elderly woman. Um, we were heckled at, we were cursed at, um, we were mocked. Um, and that's the biggest thing for me personally, um, in reflection of the event, um, Jesus was mocked, uh, you know, <laughs> his disciples were mocked, um, and that's okay. In reality, we did God's work and we were there for the right reasons. Um, and God is watching us in this moment. Um, you know, I'm all about being a cordial person, no matter your beliefs. Um, but I do believe that um, we were sent there by God. And I do believe this timing, you know, 18 days before the election is imperative for young Americans and first time voters like myself to understand that this is what you are going to get with a Kamala Harris presidency. You are going to get the Kamala Harris that alienates over 50% of the U.S. population that is Christian. You're going to get the Kamala Harris um, that skips the Al Smith uh, Memorial Dinner, um, that no um, major presidential candidate has skipped since, I believe, Walter Mondale in 1984. Um, over, you know, now over 40 years ago, um, I'm a 20 year old man. Um, that's double my life. So um, that's a long time for someone not to attend that event. Um, that, along with our experience on this day, uh -huh. uh, it's a good storm for um, the opposition. And it just proves what type of person Kamala is and what type of leader she will be. Um I'd love to ask you this question out of my own curiosity. Luke, I'll put it to you. Um, and I know it's a difficult question because I'm asking you to put yourself in the mind or experience of someone else, meaning that person could be Kamala Harris. But when she responded that way to you, uh, you and Grant, I'm curious what she understood about you. Like, what had you made clear? That you were a protester, um, that, that you were pro-life? We all hear you say, Christ is King, Jesus is Lord. Did she understand your message. I want to know specifically what she is rejecting. I know you can't know because you weren't in her mind, but you can know what did you make clear? Yeah, so um, I said Jesus is Lord due to the abortion uh, Roe v. Wade she was talking about, which me and many Christians around the world disagree with, with her stance on abortion. And we wanted to kind of send in a message that, you know, as Christians, at least me and Grant, uh, we don't accept or agree with her abortion uh, policies and that um, we believe that Jesus is Lord and that he has the final say in everything we do. And it's something we center our life around. So I guess we wanted her to know that. Right. Luke, You're Grant, I think you guys are two really brave boys. They, they don't call it the People's Republic of Madison for nothing. Um, yes. You guys went right into the lion's den, and you are brave and courteous, as I can see right here. And I just really admire you, and I just want you to know that I think your message um, is resonating. And, and very wise young men. And uh, you'll never get an apology from the Kamala Harris campaign, but I hope you get an apology from the university, because you had every right to be there. Thank you, guys. Charlie, if I, if I could say you. something before well, we sure. go here. You know, this is, this is extremely important for young Americans to understand. Um, you know, if I could ask uh, my, you know, my young Americans in this country, um, what do you want your future to look like in this country? Um, do you want to have to struggle to pay for gas? Um, do you want to have to struggle to afford groceries on a daily basis? Um, do you want to even struggle to get your first, first mortgage on a house? Uh, because that is the future you're going to get with Kamala Harris as president of the United States. A future right. with no Smart morals. Point. A future right. a future where people are exposed to evil on a daily basis. And, you know, people are stripped of the very power they have as citizens of the United States. Um, I, employ, I implore first-time voters 
make an educated choice, um, whether that be voting early, whether that be going, you know, on day of the election. Um, the future of this very country. You guys, you guys need to run for state. office. I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, we appreciate you <laughs> thank guys. Thank you so much. Yeah. I, thank you so much for being with yeah, us. Yeah. I wanted your story. to say We're a message. Against, Luke, Luke, I'm sorry to cut you off, man. We have a hard break. It's going to hit in about five seconds. But uh, understand. Great thank you, guys. You. Thank we you. Appreciate God you being bless with you guys. Us. Thank you Stay strong in Madison. <laughs> we reached out to Kamala Harris' campaign for a statement. We did not hear back. I right, appreciate those guys being with us. Um, I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilney. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch... Okay, that pretty much explains how I think and how I feel. When I first started doing television in Atlanta and Greenville, we chose two Christian channels. And um, I know how ETC operates. This is a Christian-based company. Local family, owned the company for 115 years. I know how they think too, but this program is my opinion, my guest opinion, the way that we feel about life. I also know that about 98.9% .9 of my viewers agree with the way I think and feel because if you read the Bible, we should all feel and think that way, but it's your choice. It is always your choice. We're gonna go now to First Baptist Atlanta. Now you think about it, I was a city slicker, I moved up here in the country, I married, I saw y'all, I showed y'all the Cole Haynes of Cornfield County, our family, I became a country bumpkin as fast as I could. I adopted your lifestyles, I adopted your love for canning, and thank you, thank you, thank you to Tony for my muscadine jelly, that's exciting, I love it, and it will be gone in just a couple of days. But, you know, I adopted your lifestyle, and I also fell in love with so many of you. So many of you are Baptist preachers. So many of you are um, preachers like our family over in Dawson County, Mount Vernon Baptist Church. It's a primitive Baptist church. I believe the Bible and I believe that it has not changed. So this morning, when I first got up, somebody had sent me this message from First Baptist Atlanta. And I think it's important to share with y'all. So we're gonna share just a few minutes of it. And then we're gonna do a song by Dwight Sanford. That's your bonus for today because he's worried about the election. I'm not really worried about it. I'm feeling good because I feel like y'all are gonna get out and you're gonna do your part to vote righteous. You're gonna vote for the righteous candidate. You're going to vote for our nation. We cannot let one subject, the subject of abortion, destroy our nation. And that's what some people are voting for. And I'm sorry, you know, I don't care if you're a white woman, black woman, um, brown woman, I don't care what you are. If you are a woman and you are voting for one subject, then you are on the path to destroying our country. We can't do that. Abortions are still legal in many, many states because this has been turned over to the states. So the states dictate what happens with your body, your choice. That is, that is your choice, but it is still there for you. But as for me and my family, that's not how we think. So, so we're going to share this message, and it's, it's very clear. And when I was listening to it, I was listening to it on the way up here. I started listening to it about 7 o'clock this morning. And as I kept listening, I thought, I need to share this message. So we're going to share a little bit of the message from First Baptist Atlanta. Our loving God is pledged to be the one who supplies our need, who meets every need that we have not only through daily bread, as we call it, and the air that we breathe, but by setting into motion those things we may not even realize we need, but he's already appropriated. And this includes the structures around our life, the people that he has installed to be our support system and to be the ones who take care of us, who be the ones who su supply the direction and guidance we need in getting through this life from birth until he calls us home. And in light of this, we look at God and say, are there needs that I don't even realize I have right now? And he says to us that one thing that he has given us that we need is something we don't always appreciate, but it comes from him nonetheless. And that is the nation and the government in which we live and under whom we have to submit. So the question of today's sermon is, why do we need government? And God has an answer for that in Romans chapter 13. And I want you to turn to Paul's letter to the Romans. And we're going to read verses 1 through 7, Romans 13, where the Apostle Paul answers the question about the purpose for government and why it's important and who's actually behind it. 
no matter who's in charge. So in verse number 1 of Romans 13, I hope you have a copy of the, the scriptures with you. He says, let every soul be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authority is really resisting the ordinance of God, and those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to those who do evil. Do you want to be unafraid of the authority? Then do what is good, and you'll have praise from the same. For he, that is he who is in authority, is God's minister to you for good. But if you do evil, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain. For he is God's minister and the avenger to execute wrath on him who practices evil. Therefore, you must be subject, not only out of fear of wrath, but also for conscience' sake. For because of this, you also pay taxes, for they are God's ministers attending continually to this very thing. Render, therefore, to all their due, taxes to whom taxes are due, customs to whom customs, fear to whom fear, and honor to whom honor." And I want us to stop there with that seventh verse, and let's look at these verses to see how the Apostle Paul so long ago supplies the answer to the question, why do we need government? Well, God must know we needed it because point number one is this, God established the authority of government. There is no way to interpret this passage in any other way, no matter your perspective on Bible interpretation, or if you think the Bible should be taken literally or loosely and figuratively, it is very clear what Paul's intention was, and that is to establish God as the one responsible for establishing human government. And we would look at that with our humanistic way of thinking, and we would all want to raise objections to that and say, wait a minute, and we would scratch our heads and say, how is God involved in any of the affairs of mankind and especially of secular governments? Well, if you stop and realize Paul is writing this letter to the Christians in the capital city of the Roman Empire, and if you think our country has faults and flaws, you need to study the Roman Empire and the godlessness and the barbarism of the ancient Romans. And here he is speaking to Christians, and he is telling them to recognize that even where they live, the authority there in such a wicked empire like Rome is a reflection of God's divine structure and order. Human governments are established by God, and he even says in verse 1, if you looked at it, he says, let every soul or person be subject to the governing authorities. So he is telling them to be submissive to the government. In verse 2, <laughs> this sermon's not going to get a lot of amens today. In verse 2, <laughs> he makes a radical claim that resisting the authority of human government is actually the same thing as resisting God who established that government. Now, you and I know that we can never isolate Scripture and read it by itself without looking at other Scriptures because Scripture informs Scripture. So let there be no doubt that submission to an earthly government always has qualifications and caveats. And I believe what he is saying when you interpret it with the broader witness of Scripture is that resisting the authority of government without a justifiable cause for doing so is the same as resisting God. And so he's not saying that we are to blindly obey the government which would give way to totalitarianism and a government that knows no bounds. The goal that God has for Christians, whether it's those who lived in the Roman Empire or those of us who live in our country today, is for us to live a certain kind of life that manifests his goodness and the light of Jesus to people who don't know the Lord. In fact, the same author of this letter wrote to a young man whom he considered a spiritual son named Timothy, and he was explaining to Timothy in the letter that bears Timothy's name that Timothy needed to teach the church he was pastoring to pray for leaders in government. And in 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 2, he wrote these words, Timothy, teach your people to pray for kings 
and for all who are in authority that the result would be this, that Christians may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. So he was saying to the believers of the first century, God wants us to live a quiet life. It does not mean we cannot speak. It does not mean that we should not allow our voices to be heard. But by quiet, he's referring to a quiet trust and faith in God and his sovereignty. A peaceable life means that we should never allow things that are taking place in the secular or civil realm to rob us of the peace that comes from our relationship with Christ. How do we affect that type of life? How does that come about? We pray for those who are in authority, he said in 1 Timothy 2 and verse 2. So this means without even thinking about voting or protesting or writing letters to those who have been elected to serve, our chief weapon for affecting change in the hearts of those who lead us is prayer. When we pray, we are hitting them with an invisible weapon. That's why we should never consider participating in violence or doing harm to people with whom we disagree. We have a better weapon than that. We have a spiritual weapon of prayer. And the Bible says the heart of the king is in the Lord's hands and God turns it any way he chooses to turn it. So we can affect change on our knees in prayer. And we really need to give a lot of thought to that. Then in verse 3, he gives them the solution for living the kind of life that we want to live, and that is if you don't want to be afraid of people who are in, in charge of enforcing our laws, then do what is right. And the point of that verse and of all of these verses is God expects Christians as a general principle to be law keepers. God expects us to obey the laws of our land. He even describes those who enforce the law as God's ministers in verse 4. Folks, I'm not making this up. You just read it with me. He calls them ministers, which is another word for servants of God. And he says, they do not bear the sword in vain. Now, please know, none of this means that God approves the abuses of power. We know he doesn't. None of this means that by submitting to, to the government or being commanded to subject ourselves to the government that God is somehow saying government is infallible. We know government is very fallible. And it does not mean that God, by telling us to submit to government, is saying that government can override Almighty God because government, no matter, no matter how powerful it is, cannot unseat Almighty God from his throne of power in heaven. So we understand all of that. Now, I want you to be able to hear that whole sermon. We Obviously, it was a long one. We couldn't do the whole thing, but it is on YouTube. It is First Baptist Atlanta, and it was this week's sermon, and I hope that you will listen to the whole thing. You can even listen to the first, mu uh, the first 20 minutes of it is their music, and they had some great music, some great songs, some inspirational stuff. But in order to be a Christian, you have to think of the righteous and the good. And if you can vote the opposite way and you can choose to end the life of millions and millions of children when people make that choice, then that is, that's you. That's whatever you want to do. So it's up to you. But again, if you want to see or if you want to hear the whole sermon, it is First Baptist Atlanta, so, so check it out. I promised you a song by Mr. Mr. LJ. Now this is a song that he literally wrote just like this when he got a call and somebody said, you ever wrote a song about the mountains? Could you do a song about the mountains? And immediately he did. And this is, it's become the most requested. It has become the most favorite. And of course, it's my favorite. So here we go to the mountain life. Hummingbirds out on the deck, your feet 
propped up and what the heck you love how we live here in these mountains everything is gonna be alright and we all Notley down to Carter's Lake All oh, the memories to make So much here for all to see A land that is so dear to me Welcome home to all your dreams Hot rod boards and crystal streams Now you love how we Oh